Hey and welcome back to a new video. Also follow up video about the topic from previous Sunday because I didn't really deliver in the way I should have. I was just, I'm fully honest, I was being lazy. I was first of all frustrated by the system not working fine and we needed a new, a new editing rig. And then I was just simply being lazy. So I thought when I was looking at the system, it was increasing in temperature over time that it cannot really be thermal paced by the amount it was increasing. And then the AIO was still working fine. And I thought, okay, there must be something about the motherboard or the CPU. But I completely missed the real reason. And I also missed it because I was lazy. I should have just taken the CPU out of the socket and I would have probably figured it out straight away. But then it took a lot of comments and also my Discord admin to point me towards the real issue because four years ago when I built the system, in the German part I briefly noted that this CPU was apparently deleted before because this is apparently the AMD Threadripper 3960X that I was experimenting with um, deleting. And I was even watching the video from back then in preparation for the previous video to just do some basic comparison because I was showing some temperatures, I wanted to check if there was already an issue back then or if I missed something, but I didn't watch the full video. Like I didn't watch both German and English, otherwise I would have figured this probably out straight away. So my preparation was also lazy. And I just want to apologize for not doing it the proper way, for cheaping out a little bit, but yeah, there's not really an excuse about it. I just wanna, in this video, go down, open the socket, see if the CPU was actually deleted and if this was the real issue or not. And yeah, sorry if I disappointed anyone in the previous video for not doing it properly right away. The state of the hardware otherwise is still exactly the same as in the previous video, only that I took it out from the case, but I didn't remove the CPU from the socket so far. Uh, I quickly want to talk about the memory sticks though. So you can see that we have eight memory sticks in total, memory sticks. A few people noticed in the comments that only half of those memory sticks were detected when we were going in BIOS in the last video, which is as expected because half of them are not real memory modules. Half of them are, I think Corsair called it light enhancement kits to just populate the empty slots to have it yeah, more evenly nice looking and just to populate all the slots, but they are not real memory sticks. So only four sticks are real, which is why four detected sticks are expected and normal. I also want to highlight that after the last video, I just to double check also mounted this 360 AIO on top to make sure that it was not the AIO, that not the pump was dead or like radiator blocked or anything like that. And the, with like this 360 AIO, the temperature only increased by or decreased by a few degrees Celsius. So I was sure that it cannot be the AIO. Enough talking, it's time to get the CPU out of the socket to see if it was deleted or not. At least I can remember that I installed a CPU without the carrier frame because I had this small incident where the CPU dropped into the socket, so I didn't want to use that. Socket so far looks nice, no damage there. Digest is still a little bit sticked on because you can see on the edges, I back then tried to glue the IHS back a little bit. Yep. It is definitely a deleted CPU. Well, if I wasn't that lazy and if I did proper work last weekend, then I would have figured this out straight away. Now I have to try to find some razor blades somewhere to loosen the IHS. Or maybe not even required. I just thought there is a gap that's maybe big enough so I can just get underneath there and lift it up. Well, beautifully deleted 3960X. And the heat's better. I think that is the cause of the temperature issues. On a CPU, I think it looks okay. I will try to apply some fresh liquid metal or see if this is even still liquid or not. But I think looking at the IHS, that could definitely be, or I'm pretty sure that this is the problem. And what I noticed is if you pay attention to the black areas around the chips, that seems where yeah, it just kind of dried out or there was some kind of uh, chemical reaction. And that's probably why there was not sufficient contact anymore. And here you can see it in even better detail under the microscope. So a lot of liquid metal in the center and this black stuff around, not only the CCD, but also the big IO die fully surrounded by 
this black looking stuff could be probably gallium oxide. Still, underneath, you can see there's a lot of liquid metal left, so it's not like everything is hard or there was a lot of kind of chemical reaction going on. There's probably, I mean, the black stuff I'm removing here. It's probably just a lot of oxide on top of the liquid metal. Quite interesting though is if we zoom in 500 times magnified onto the black area, this looks like, I don't know, there are like cracks in the surface, which is very interesting. Quickly also performed a material analysis and there you can see it's about 5% nickel, 8% gallium and about 88% oxygen. So it's definitely as we expected with this black stuff, uh, gallium oxide and with a little bit of nickel probably from the heat spreader underneath. To give this video at least some kind of value, I also decided to put the heat spreader underneath our scanning ele electron microscope where we can investigate those cracks in the surface in much more detail than what we can do with a normal light-based microscope. We found one of those spots where we can see the cracks in the surface. So here those dark areas are the cracks. It's about 300 times magnified and we will now try to zoom in even further to yeah, investigate what is going on there. It was even a challenge to just put the Threadripper IHS inside. You can see it here with the infrared camera. I mean, it's just way too big for a normal scanning electron microscope for the size, but just still worked out. And here we have those cracks. To give you a perspective, the field of view here, so from left to right, this is a distance of 0.3 millimeters. So we're looking at a very small area. It looks like a dried surface, like in a desert something. Very interesting. And that is also what we looked at under the microscope earlier, where we saw mainly gallium oxide and a bit of nickel, where we are not sure if the nickel was just from underneath. So mainly that's probably just uh, gallium oxide. This is also just my favorite toy ride at the moment. So if we just start magnifying from 100 times, can keep magnifying, keep magnifying. Now it's about 1000 times magnified. 2,000, 4,000, 5,000, closing in on 10,000 times magnified. Yeah, the structures and things you can see, absolutely amazing. Sometimes it's really hard to tell what you're looking at, but yeah, it's a lot of fun to try and investigate things. I meanwhile also spend time to clean the CPU as expected. There's only yeah, very little scratches, residues left on the silicon dyes. As expected, we know there is not really an interaction with the gallium, indium and also the silicon itself. So cleaning of the CPU was no problem at all. On the heat spreader though, it looks different. Also, as expected, I would say I wiped it off like 10 times with also different cleaners, but as you can see, there are still residues, both from liquid metal and also the darker areas that we inspected under the scanning, scanning electron microscope, which is basically yeah, residues and also embrittlement by the gallium. If you remember it, it was a long time ago when we deleted the CPU, even I couldn't remember, uh, but first we had to obviously delete the CPU and then remove the indium that is used for the soldering process and underneath the indium you have this gold wetting layer and all of this is not the ideal preparation for a surface for the use of gallium based um, liquid metal. And that's the result what we see. We see the surface embrittlement that is basically the gallium eating into the yeah, gold layer first and then into the copper and yeah, without the proper preparation of the surface, that is just what happens. Now we know, like years later, that even the nickel plating that's currently used on a lot of coolers, it's still much better than this, but it's not sufficient. It's like not immune against uh, liquid metal al alloys, but it's significantly slowing down this kind of embrittlement process that we're seeing on this IHS, for example. So what I still wanna do to finish this project, finish this entire problem, put liquid metal back on, see if this fixes the temperatures and then hopefully close this book. Even if this improves the temperatures now, I would assume that the temperatures will go downhill quickly again, because at least this embrittlement, the black part where you have all these cracks in the surfaces is still there. I'm just covering this with liquid metal now, but yeah, surface definitely not ideal anymore. Just putting it back into the socket.
quick check to see if it boots. Seems okay, CPU is slowly getting warm. Yep. And now this looks a lot more promising. Previously, we would have seen like 80 degrees Celsius instantly. And even in Windows, it's a lot better, about 40 to 50 degrees Celsius in idle. And it also improved the CPU package power draw to like 50 to 60 watt. Now you can see in Cinebench, CPU easily consumes about 250 to up to 280 watt peak still stays below 80 degrees Celsius. And with this, I would basically consider the problem resolved. In total, we had two problems, me being lazy and the liquid metal eating itself into the IHS and brittling the IHS over a long time period. I hope it was still interesting for you to see, especially the embrittlement in the surface of the heat spreader. One thing I would like to add that has nothing to do with this topic regarding Ryzen 9000. So far, I didn't do any kind of video about it because officially I didn't receive any kind of information by AMD. It's like no information regarding the CPUs themselves, the chipsets, um, not even the sampling, not even talking about the sampling. Um, so there was a problem that AMD didn't communicate with any kind of German tech YouTubers. So it's not only me, but also all other German tech YouTubers didn't get any kind of information from AMD because yeah, we just were lost. They just didn't um, yeah, include us in their communication. And we now talked to AMD combined to fix this issue. It seems to be finally fixed that we are now finally getting official information by AMD. It's not like I didn't want to do anything about Ryzen 9000 because I saw a lot of comments about it, but it just has zero information, like zero official information. I hope to still get a sample in time and then we will hopefully be able to provide also some Ryzen 9000 contact for launch. All right, thanks for tuning in. See you next time, bye-bye.